The 6.5 is on the road at HP Amplify 2024 here in Las Vegas. It's been an incredible event so far. It's really the combination of hybrid work and all the awesome things that A and I, AI can bring to the A table. And I. A and I. I know, I, I coined that new phrase. And then sprinkling services on top and, and all around it. Dan, it's been good. Yeah, it has been good. And, and there is a lot of focus right now on AI. There's a lot of focus on the device and the PC. There's a lot of focus on hybrid and new work trends, shaping kind of how people will function and be productive in a hybrid era, Pat. And of course, with all these things happening at the same time, there should be a big focus on security. That's right, and it's 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 interesting, Dan. Both both of us have uh, quantum uh, swim lanes, advisory swim lanes. We do. And one of the trends that we've seen, we've only seen in the data centers, this notion of having a quantum safe security in the cloud and on-prem in the data center. But we're here to talk about quantum safety related to PCs. And we have here Ian Pratt, who runs security for personal systems. Ian, welcome to the 6.5, first time on the show. Yeah, pleasure to be here, thanks. Yeah, yeah you kind of heard the, the preamble. Uh, we're busy talking about AI and all this exponential productivity, and all this exponential productivity and app use and mobile devices and you know, AI PCs, you must be as a security person looking at this and going, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> yep, no, we're in for some exciting times, that's for sure, with, um, you know, AI really, um, you're bringing so much more uh, your personal data, you know, to uh, PC endpoints and uh, the protection, the privacy that we need to provide for them. I think it's, uh, it's going to be an increasing problem and you know, we're already seeing that with the sort of stampede that companies are having to adopt AI, all of the new vulnerabilities that that is creating. So it's certainly a time, an exciting time to be alive in security, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. So you announced today what was called a world's first. Uh, congratulations. You know, I may have spilled the beans in the intro, but can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, what quantum and computer hacks and how you're using firmware to protect that in the future? Yeah, so we announced the, the, what is the fifth generation of our security controller chip, which is some custom silicon that we create, that we build in to all of our commercial PCs. And that custom silicon has a number of functions. It's, uh, it's powered on even when the machine appears to be powered off, watching over the security of the platform. And one of the key things it does is it makes sure that you know, when you press the power button, when the machine boots up, that it's actually booting firmware which is uh, legitimate, that it's, uh, you know, that hasn't been tampered with. Because firmware is absolutely fundamental to the security of the whole platform. Sure. If, uh, if, if that's compromised, then all bets are off. You can't trust anything at that point. And so it's critical that we make sure that it is running, you know, legitimate firmware that it hasn't been tampered with. And the key thing that we announced uh, today is that uh, this fifth generation security controller chip, it is ready for you know, some time in the future when quantum computers are created which can, can break the cryptography that we all rely on today um, that you know, really protects everything, digital signatures, um, you know, HTTPS and secure transactions all rely on this public key cryptography which can be broken if somebody creates a quantum computer. So um, organizations are now beginning to, to start thinking how they protect themselves uh, you know, against that, uh, that coming future. Um, for our PCs, for protecting our firmware, we have built that capability into our custom silicon to, uh, to use algorithms which are actually resistant to attacks from quantum computers. Hmm. So, you know, folks using our machines won't, that'll be one less thing they have to worry about. And it's a very fundamental thing in the stack. You know, right. qu quantum's still pretty, in, pretty much in its infancy in many ways, especially as it pertains to commercialization. Having said that, you know, you're sitting here saying quantum could be, quantum machines could be the enabler to create a lot of risk, a lot of hacks, and you're addressing it very early. Speak a little bit about kind of what the quantum threat is, just because I don't think most people even understand quantum and maybe just a little background would help. 
Sure. So, you know, there are a lot of different groups across the world um, build, you know, trying to build quantum computers. And we can build small ones, they're really just toys, but it's a uh, you know, combination of physics and engineering to scale that up. And these quantum computers work in a very different way from the computers we, we have today. They are good for a particular set of, of algorithms for particular tasks. Right. So you're not going to run Microsoft Word on a quantum sure. computer. But one of the things which it does enable is something called Shor's algorithm, which you can use to uh, factor prime numbers. You know, take a very large number and, and figure out what two things were multiplied together to make it. Now, the fact that that is difficult is something which underpins all of the cryptography we rely on today. And if someone manages to build one of these quantum computers and can factor these large prime numbers, they can break all of the cryptography uh, you know, that we use today when we're accessing a website or for verifying digital signatures. You know, it's, it's suddenly, you, right. at that point, you can trust nothing. And you know, there are a lot of, you need a, a pretty big quantum computer to be able to do that. Where no one's close to having one today, but if you, you know, project out, it's quite likely that someone is is going to create one in the not too distant future, and we have to start preparing for that eventuality. That it's uh, everything we rely on today is going to have to change. So, uh, in characterizing the threat, is this a critical infrastructure? Uh, you know, energy, education, finance, military. Uh, telecommunications, or, or is it is it broader uh, than that? Well, I mean, we all rely on this, yeah, the same cryptography, right? You know, whenever you uh, you know, visit a website, you're relying on it. But if you think about who who creates one of these uh, these quantum computers, what are they going to use it for first? Right. And where the money is. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it and it's going to be probably be a nation state that creates it, and they're probably going to be looking to uh, to use it to embed themselves in critical infrastructure, uh, to uh, decode secrets of uh, government communication, etc. Right. So those are certainly the places where you know, they're going to have to worry about it first, but ultimately all of the encryption we use is going to, uh, to have to move to quantum resistant varieties right. because you know, once one of these computers exists, you know, I don't suppose there's only going to be one of them for long, we're going to see uh, others and then eventually you know, we might even see criminal organizations getting access to them. And, sure. Uh, you know, it, we have to have migrated off the cryptography we use today ahead of them. There's a, there's a real cat and mouse game. I mean, every yeah, I like new to technology. Call it spy versus spy type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't want to, you know, pick on cats or, or mice. So, yeah, but there is a, you know, every new technology that comes out, it's an opportunity to harden. And then at the same time, you know, the, the black hats and the nation right. states figure out how to use that same technology for more mischief and to create more chaos. And so I guess that leaves us with a very logical question, Ian, which is, you know, how do you in your role and as HP recommend to your companies and your partners uh, to prepare with all this that's going on uh, specific to the announcement today, but maybe more broadly too against bigger cyber threats? Yeah, well, we already see that it's something that governments are beginning to worry about and beginning to start talking about putting uh, purchasing rules in place to, uh, to favor um, buying systems which are using quantum resistant cryptography. Right. So, you know, at least for, for critical infrastructure, that may be in place in the US as soon as 2025. But, you know, as I go around talking to, uh, to folks at you know, Global 2000 companies, many of them now do have an individual identified in that organization that's responsible for managing their transition to uh, quantum resistant cryptography. Right. And so it is something which organizations are beginning to start paying serious attention to. Obviously, it's looking at, uh, at how they use cryptography themselves, but yes. also looking at all of the systems and infrastructure they rely on, and then working with their vendors to, to make sure that uh, that, that is uh, you know, quantum resistant in time. And I think in particular, when you're talking about uh, systems which are very difficult or perhaps impossible to upgrade quickly. Like for things which are just software, you know, we can just download a software patch and move to a new cryptography scheme. But for things like PCs, where that verification has to be done in hardware, 
you know, you can't patch silicon. Right. And uh, you need to buy a machine that has got that quantum resistant crypto built wow. into the silicon. And some of those PCs that people are buying, uh, you know, this year, you know, certainly in critical infrastructure, they're going to be in use for many years to come. Sure, so they as need we've to take seen. It into account. Yes. Well, Ian, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Six Five. It's uh, been great having you. This is going to be a big topic, Pat. I, I yes. do not think we've heard the last from Ian. Let's bring you back soon. Great. Well, thanks. Thank Good talking. You. All right, everyone out there, hit that subscribe button. Join Patrick and I here for all of the episodes of 6.5 at HP Amplify 2024 here in Las Vegas. But for this episode, it's time for us to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.